to get into the discussion of today, we're talking about lines of rhythm. There are some key points to know about lines of rhythm, the line of action, three major masses of the body, which I've simplified into what I call three eggs in a bucket, or two eggs in a bucket, sorry. And then, and then constructing and placing those lines of rhythm around the two eggs in a bucket. And the line of action is basically a single line that depicts the overall movement of the body. You want to start that movement from the crown of the head through either the weight-bearing leg or the leg that defines the movement of the pose most accurately. If the action line is an S action line, which is often, you want to avoid curving the S back and forth more than one simple elongated S. If the action line is a C action line, then sometimes you may need to use more than one line to represent the pose. Just remember that the action line is one line in a series of rhythmic lines. It takes less than a second to draw a line, so if you're drawing a one minute pose, take 59 seconds to, to look at the pose to decide, you know, is it a C action line, is it an S action line, or is it an I action line? Those are your three options. Take your time, look at them, you know, what do you think from the crown of the head? Does it go through the left leg or the right leg? And then make the decision. You have plenty of time to think about that, even in a one minute pose. And once you have the you know, movement described via the action line, then you can place uh, the three major masses of the body, which is the cranium, the thoracic cavity, and the pelvis. I always start with the, the thoracic cavity or the rib cage. It's the largest mass, it has the most weight. Secondarily, I draw the pelvic structure. Subsequently, I draw the head. If you move the pelvis and you move the rib cage, if you move either one of them, the pose completely changes. That's why the rib cage is first and the pelvic structure is second. It's helpful to place the three major masses correctly in space as you're doing this. You want to do that along the line of action. Remember, the action line is the backbone of the pose, and as such, it's useful to construct the rest of the drawing around it. If you abandon this idea, you, you're likely to cause yourself additional frustration because if you don't make use of the action line, which is the core of your figure drawing, then you'll be off, and it, it might be frustrating. That's just a mindset shift, you know, it doesn't matter if it's off. You just keep drawing and make a new one that's, that's correct. In drawing, nothing is correct. When I try to apply that same concept to my life, it's almost impossible, you know. Really challenging to apply the drawing concepts to life. The concepts of drawing relate to life exactly. Absolutely parallel, but incredibly difficult to apply. In order to orient the masses in space, I use what I call the three T's of the major masses. One for the cranium, one for the thoracic cavity, and one for the pelvic structure. The one for the cranium is along the superciliary arch, and then down the central facial features, the glabella, the philtrum, and then the mental tuberosity. For the thoracic cavity, it'll be along the fifth rib, and then that T is upside down. The vertical portion of that T is moving up the sternum from the xiphoid process to the suprasternal notch. Moving on to the pelvic structure, you want to go across the, the anterior superior iliac spine for the horizontal portion of the T. Vertical T is kind of imaginary as you're going down to the pubic symphysis, you know, the center of that, just above the genitals. Once you find these T's and orient the angles of the vertical portion of these T's, it's easy to to find the axis of the structure because the, the vertical portion of the T and the horizontal portion of the T remain in a 90 degree relationship with each other. So when one changes, the other changes. After you are able to apply, accurately apply the line of action and depict the spatial orientation of the three major masses of the body, then it's time to add lines of rhythm to your drawing. There are two really helpful tips when it comes to uh, lines of rhythm. The first is to look for the compressed side of the body and its relationship to the expanding side of the body. The second is to calligraphically make your lines thinner and darker in the, in the moments of deepest compression and lighter and open in moments of expansion. 
This is called dynamics in drawing. You can add a sense of elegance and beauty to your gesture drawings by thinking of calligraphic line. In my next video, I will talk about constructing the gesture out of cubes or three-dimensional boxes. Also with my next video, I plan to go back to the traditional method of giving uh, demonstrations. I feel like it's more fluid for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find some of the things we talked about helpful in your own drawing practice. If you have any comments or suggestions, I would really appreciate the critique. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.